Morning, and welcome to another episode of music that I have, and you probably don't. Uh, today we're listening to the record simply titled "Music to Read Lady Chatterley's Lover" by, and that's exactly what this record is. Uh, put out by Richard Shores in uh, 1957, when the controversy over this book was raging wild. Decided to put out a record simply to read the book by. Let's read a little of the liner notes on the back here. Uh, Richard Soar's initial venture into the musical No Man's Land may trip the same kind of alarm. Nature in its raw is seldom mild and can be seen when Shores utilizes his melodic palette to categorize the spectrum of human emotions. And he does. The tracks are all emotional. There's love, hate, sorrow, gay, meaning happy, blues, surprise, frustration, nostalgia, fear, hysteria. It's all there. But hopefully you can get through with Lady Chatterley's Lover in 27 minutes. That's some fast reading right there. Oh, wait, wait. Slip, slip ahead in the book to the dreamy part. Yeah, because we're kind of getting that kind of dreamy music right now. Um, what a strange enterprise. Put out uh, by Mercury Records. Uh, and that's just a little sample of music to read Lady Chatterley's Lover by. Move apart. Move ahead to the f exciting part of the book. Next up, I got a gem for you here. Let me turn this down. I'm going to bring up this next uh, selection. I'm surprised it has not been sampled in something at this point or another because there are little bits of gem on there. And I'm going to close up today with a song that actually made, it's not even a song, but it, it made the top 10 billboard list for one week. And there's only a short handful of, of records that came out that only made the top 10. I need to see where I put it here. Aha. And this is a, uh, a record simply entitled An Open Letter to My Teenage Son. And uh, nineteen sixty seven. to long hair or beards on young people. Some great men have worn long hair and beards, George Washington and Abe Lincoln. If to you long hair or a beard is a symbol of independence, if you believe in your heart that the principles of this country, our heritage, is worthy of this display of pride, that all men shall remain free, that free men at all times shall not inflict their personal limitations of achievements on others, to demand your own rights as well as the rights of others and be willing to fight for this right, you have my blessing. You ask that I not judge you merely as a teenager, to judge you on your own personal habits, abilities, and goals. This is a fair request, and I promise I will not judge any person only as a teenager. If you will constantly remind yourself that some of my generation judges people by their race, their belief, or the color of their skin. And this is no more right than saying all teenagers are drunken dope addicts or glue sniffers. If you will judge every human being on his own individual potential, I will do the same. 
You ask me if God is dead. This is a question each individual must answer within himself. With a warm summer day, with all its brightness, all its sound, all its exhilarating breathiness, just happen? God is love. Remember that God is a guide and not a stormtrooper. Realize that many of the past and present generation, because of a well-intentioned but unjustifiable misconception, have attempted to legislate morality. This created part of the basis for your generation's need to rebel against our society. With this knowledge, perhaps your children will never ask, is God dead? I sometimes think that much of mankind is attempting to work him to death. You ask my opinion of draft card burners. I would answer this way. All past wars have been dirty, unfair, immoral, bloody, and second-guessed. However, history has shown most of the necessary. If you doubt that our free enterprise system in the United States is worth protecting, if you doubt the principle on which this country was founded, that we remain free to choose our religion, our individual endeavors, our method of government, if you doubt that each free individual in this great country should reap awards commensurate only with his own efforts, then it's doubtful that you belong here. If you doubt that people to govern us should be selected by their desire to allow us to strive for any goal we feel capable of attaining, then it's doubtful you should participate in their selection. If you are not grateful to a country that gave your father an opportunity to work for his family, to give you the things you've had, and you do not feel pride enough to fight for your right to continue in this manner, then I assume the blame for your failure to recognize the true value of our birthright. I would remind you that your mother will love you no matter what you do, because she's a woman. And I love you too, son. But I also love our country and the principles for which we stand. If you decide to burn your draft card, then burn your birth certificate at the same time. From that moment on, I have no son.